nope, try, try again. So it didn't take long, and I, I got an email, and uh, somebody said, but you play flight simulator, you, you do games, right? You're wasting a lot of time doing that, right? Mm, try, try again. So, uh, first off, uh, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator, the home page here. Uh, I have owned it since release. I pre-ordered it, and so the day that it was released, I was downloading it to play it. So, I've been there the entire time. And so, that's probably the first question that we need to ask is just, when was that released? Well, I went, I took the liberty to go ahead and look that up. Thanks to Google, we can get a quick and easy answer. Uh, it was released on August 18th of 2020, okay? And right now, that was 1,216 days ago. Yep, Google lets me uh, find that out easy and just as quick as well. So let's go back over on to the flight simulator here. And I'm going to click on profile. And on my profile here, you will see how many hours my logbook has, which is 550 hours in that 1,260 days. Well, or 16, sorry. So, I, I went ahead and I took the liberty of bringing up a calculator. And so, we're going to take that 550 hours and we're going to divide it by 1,216, which I believe is what it was. 1,216 days. Now, we're going to hit enter here. And what you're going to see is point four five two three oh two six three one five seven right but we'll we'll just say point four five uh which would be i mean we could actually get uh let me pull this number out here and i'll put in because i can't remember what percent is uh let's see go back of 60 which minutes of course so you're talking wait I think I might have did that math wrong <laughs> it's less than a half an hour a day is what it works out I was trying to get a little bit more specific but I did my maths wrong um, so it's going to work out to a little less than a half an hour a day a little less than a half an hour a day <laughs> I don't watch TV I, you know, we usually will pick one movie on the weekend or something like that to watch. Um, but I don't watch TV. Uh, I don't watch sports. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. I literally spend a lot of my time looking stuff up. I don't know what to tell folks, but it is what it is. I spend my life trying to learn, trying to do better. That is what I spend my life doing. I don't try to find uh, methods of leisure or whatever to distract me because I don't have anything better to do. I will find something better to do. I hated it when I worked fast food. And got all my work all done. I'm all caught up. You know, no customers. You know, standing there taking a breather. And then, of course, you've got the management that comes around. Shouldn't you be doing something? And then, you know, they've got you pulling the grills out and all of that. And, and uh, I, I, I hated that. I hated that because I thought, you know, my, my, my motto, my, or not motto, but my theory was I bust my butt, I get my work done, and then I can have a breather, Right. That's why I've always <laughs> approached it. Uh, but that doesn't work in fast food. Or at least you have to be smart about it. You have to make it look like you're busy. Uh, or else they will most certainly find you something to do. Uh, well, that may have not been cool when I was a teeny bopper working at McDonald's and Hardee's. But uh, as an adult, I understand it. And I see a lot of value in that. And that is standing around find something to do you you can still kind of take a little bit of a break and still get stuff done I, it's very possible i do it all the time um you know i, 
don't know what to tell folks. I am not the average person. I am not in any way, shape, or form normal. And I keep saying this over and over and over. I mean it. I am not normal. And that is both good and bad. Believe me, it's both good and bad. I don't know what else to say. And this is it. I mean, I've got DCS installed. I think I installed another one. I think it's War Thunder or something. I don't remember. But uh, I've messed a little bit with DCS. Um, I I got to learn how to use the weapon systems and stuff like that. And I'm just not that motivated to do it. I, not, I am not motivated to sit on my ass and play games. I'm not. That doesn't motivate me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, as something to do once in a while or whatever, yeah, but it's clearly not enough of an interest to get me to even sit there long enough to figure out the weapon systems because I'm not that interested. Uh, I pulled up the settings for, I think it was War Thunder, I pulled up the settings for it and I'm like, oh my goodness, and I never had it up since. <laughs> Because I, I have to configure everything for it. I just don't... I, I don't have the the desire. I don't have enough of a desire there to do it. I just don't. Um, I don't get my jollies off wasting time. I, 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 I have to account for myself. Okay? And if I look back at myself and I say, Well, you just spend all this time just finding ways to keep you distracted or, or whatever, I'm not going to be good with that, with myself. I don't care what other people think. That's not important. I don't want to cheat myself. Remember back in school when teachers would tell you that when you cheat on your, your a test, you're just cheating yourself? That's true. I don't think, even today, I don't think a lot of adults really agree with that because they still try to keep cheating, thinking that they're going to get ahead. And in society, that's very true. Chances are, you know, you, you can just keep faking, 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 and you're going to get far as long as you can keep your fake on. But let's talk about SHTF. How well is that mindset going to do then? Because it's going to come to a time to where you can't just flippantly say something. You're going to have to be able to do it. And people are going to rely on you, depend on you to be able to do it. Well, that goes back to my favorite hat as a child that says when the green flag drops, the bullshit stops. Yeah, I wanted it. They let me get it, and that was one of my uh, that was one of my favorite hats as a child. When the bullshit or uh, the bullshit stops, when the green flag drops, and uh, you know, in preparedness, it's the same way. When when that balloon, if you will, go up, goes up, things go sideways, whatever the case may be, it's not going to be about how much you can bullshit people. It's going to be 100% about how much you can actually apply and do. And so by not disciplining yourself and taking the self-responsibility to spend as much time as you can learning and building skills, you are cheating yourself. It's the same thing as what the teachers were trying to tell you in school. No different. And the saddest part of it all is if it was just that person that didn't take upon that self-discipline, that self-responsibility, that's one thing. I'm all about somebody having to answer for their own deeds. But that's not what happens in that case because anybody that relies on that person is going to fail as well. And that is where I've got the problem. Again, I, you know, if somebody wants to drive themselves into the ground, that's on them. That's fine. I won't, I won't get involved. I definitely ain't going to get yanked off a cliff trying to stop somebody from jumping off of it. But what frustrates me is the people that start grabbing as many others as they can when they take that leap off that cliff because they don't want to do it alone or they don't want to make themselves look like low or lesser 
because they didn't want to do the work. They didn't want to put in the time. And so they're going to take everybody else down with them. I'm not good with that. I am not good with that. You know, I cannot believe that we live in a society that the people that are leading by example and trying to show other people about leading by example, trying to show other people about what leadership really is, is getting drugged through the mud by the individuals that, that play a good game. But uh, in reality, they're not going to have a lot to show for it. The little video I put out early early this morning, the little video, no talking, just the images that flash through. This Hollywood prepper mindset, I cannot even come close to explaining to you how bad it is, how dangerous it is, how destructive it is. What is going to happen when people have it in their mind what it's going to be like after SHTF? I mean, goodness, look at all the channels that are dissecting the hell out of that movie, uh, Leave It... Um, whatever it was, leave everything behind or whatever the hell the movie was that's on Netflix and ever, all the prepper channels, all, you know, and you got some of them that are taking deep dives and analyzing the movie and all that. <laughs> it didn't deserve that much time. At all. For the first reason, it's a movie. What do I keep saying? about the Hollywood preppers and the Hollywood prepper mindset. The proof is in the pudding. So many channels ran out to sit there and do their full expose on a movie. On a movie. <laughs> this wasn't in any way framed as some type of survival or preparedness instructional video. It was a movie. You know, entertainment. I don't think that anybody should have looked for a single moment of it to be reflective of reality. I mean, if you did that, you failed from the start. But that's where this mindset comes from, of hiding in your hidey hole with your box of crackers and not letting anybody in and blah, 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 because that's all it is. And then what's going to happen when that day comes? And not for everybody. Understand that it's going to be different for people in different parts of the, the world and all of that. But a lot of people live very similar situations as what we do. You know, they don't live in New York City. And at the same time, they don't live out in BFE. They, they live in a town, whether it be renting an apartment or a house or buying a house, what have you. But a lot of us live in communities. And... I would say chances are probably even higher that the majority of us don't live in the big city type of communities. A lot of us probably live in kind of smaller town kind of communities. My guess would be uh, the majority of us would probably be looking at our local populations of, I don't know, between 10 and 30,000 would probably be the majority. So when you look at it from that aspect that not all of us live out in BFE not all of us can afford to go and buy a place and move out to BFE so when you look at it realistically what's going to happen when that balloon dry or that balloon goes up what what's going to happen when they step outside and here they've had this particular mindset that things were going to go down like this, 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 and this, and this. And they walk outside. They see their neighbors. And they realize there's a whole hell of a lot of things that they can do to actually help their neighbors without getting into your food stash or anything else. Again, like I've said, you don't have to tell folks what you have or don't have. But it's not going to 
shake out for the majority of us the way that the prepper channels make it sound. And the only thing that they know is what they get from Hollywood. The reality is, same like with other times that our nation has been in crisis, a lot of people, a lot of people band together and try to help each other through it. So what's going to happen when you've been trained with the mindset that it's going to be Mad Max and you're going to have to shoot your neighbor for your box of crackers? What's going to happen when it doesn't work out like that? Moreover, what's going to happen to you mentally? What's going to happen when you realize that everything that you had gamed out, were gamed in your head, had it all lined up, you have to just completely throw it all away because it didn't even remotely start like that and it isn't remotely going like that. Then what? That is why I keep trying to explain this to folks. This whole, it's, it's became a, a fantasy thing. This whole prepper thing has become a fad fantasy role play club. <laughs> that one blows me away. The whole mindset that preppers are a big club. No, we're not. And the more you have the mindset that we are a big club, the more likely you're going to fail when that time indeed comes because you're not going to have all those club members there. Ah, <gasps> Then what? So I would advise you not to treat preparedness or the preparedness community like a club because usually when it comes time to do whatever it is the club supports, the club gets together. Okay? In this particular instance, it's going to be quite the opposite. When that time comes, it's going to be when the time that the club falls apart. And there won't be any way to get a hold of the other club members, for the most part. Of course, I'm sure that there's, there's definitely exceptions to that. People that have combo plans and whatnot put together. And that's great. But that's not going to be descriptive of the majority of us. Just a fact. It's not club prepper. There is no such thing as club prepper. You can convince yourself of that. You can bullshit yourself of that. But I'm telling you, when that day comes and there is no interwebs, you're not going to be a part of Club Prepper anymore. You're going to be by yourself. And if you'd spent that time that you were busy coordinating with Club Prepper, if you would have spent that time think at least thinking about how you're going to coordinate with the people that are actually around you, you're going to do way better off. I'm, I'm telling you, the mindset, the psychology behind what is being taught on YouTube about preparedness is ass backwards. Ass backwards. And we should be all for people that want to be self-destructive, whatever. Just don't take anybody else, else off the cliff with you. That's all. That's all. Anyway... I don't want to tell folks. <laughs> I'm not a TV watcher. I'm not a gamer. I am who I say I am. Which isn't anything special. I just think that I have my priorities a little more straight. That's all. Other than that, I'm just an average human being. Just with very, very weird mindset that can't learn enough. I don't know what it is. It's been a an OCD thing of mine since I was a child. I have to consistently be learning. If, um, if I'm not allowed to learn, I tend to get in trouble. <laughs> I don't know. That's what it is. I'll tell you what, the internet has actually kept me out of more trouble than anything else on the planet. Because <laughs> it's been able to, to facilitate my learning. So, what's that going to look like after the balloon goes up and I don't have that outlet? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
I think I'll be okay. I think I'll have plenty of things to keep me busy, so I think I'll be fine. But, um, yeah, that's going to be my biggest thing is uh, not being able to do the level of research that I do today. Um, that's going to be my biggest thing, and that's going to be the thing that is going to affect me the most mentally, psychologically, um, no longer having that. Now, will that make me all flip out and freak out and fail? No, no. Um, again, I'll be plenty busy. I will be plenty busy. So it won't be a, a matter of having the idle time to uh, figure out ingenious ways to get myself in trouble. <laughs> anyway. Eh. Nope. Nope. Try. Try again. Shalom.